Hello and welcome. This is Zerizi here, kicking off our first ever long form video series on the game Foundation. Foundation recently had its major 1.9 update release, which included lots of new and exciting changes. Things like in-game goals called aspirations, a new progression system, taxation, improved mechanics, more narrative choices, and much, much more. Our main goals of the series will be to play vanilla, meaning we won't be using any mods. We'll have a heavy focus on style and aesthetics of our village. And of course, we'll be exploring all of the new 1.9 features as we go through our playthrough. There's lots to see, lots to do, and I cannot wait to get in it with you. Welcome to episode one of Goldcrest. I've been using this fluvial map. Um, this one's kind of cool, has a lot of rivers and stuff in it. Uh, I'm gonna go with this one for our playthrough. So this is one of the uh, official map choices you can pick. Uh, so again, no mods. Uh, that way we can also get achievements. A new beginning. After a long journey throughout the realm, your people finally reach new lands. Your lands. Your lands. <laughs> Territories you were asked to settle for reasons of your own. Your villagers await your command. They are eager to advise your steps if you require so. Yeah, so this is, I think, the tutorial here. Um, if you haven't played before, just for kicks since we're doing like a uh, kind of a, you know, a beginner friendly series let's just kind of do that uh path to you know looks like you can kind of either skip this or uh kind of gives you kind of a little bit of like a you know path to get through so let's hear their advice the first piece of advice comes from the eldest of your villagers he suggests you consider some basic needs when settling down berries for your people stone and wood for your construction and the rest will find its way cool yeah so it's obviously all the uh, beginning ingredients we need for our, our town um, so the way uh, foundation works is there is a lot of plots you can pick right away. So this is where you're going to start off. They all have, uh, every plot will have, um, that gives you the option, will have uh, rock, stone, uh, berries, and then trees. So the reason why you don't get like this area is because there's no uh, berries or stone. So you'll see that every time there's a plot, that means we can have those. Um, so I've played around on this map a few times and I've tried different plots. Um, also. Fun little thing here is if you kind of come up in these higher areas, you can kind of keep zooming out further, which helps kind of give you a bit more lay of the land. I personally like to stay close to the river because as you'll see, there's little uh, fishing areas here, a uh, really good source of food um, for mid game. So uh, I definitely like to stay close to the river. I think I want to pick this plot of land central to the map. Uh, also pretty close to later down when we get marble and different types of stone. In late game, we'll have access to that over here. Um, we'll have the river here. Uh, yeah, we can also buy a second plot pretty early on in the game for free um, for following our choices here, our advice, um, which you can pin that, by the way. Um, and right here, we'll be able to buy two plots of lands close by that both have uh, another set of berries uh, and stone for us. So yeah, let's... Uh Let's start with this plot here. So now we have uh, our first plot. You'll notice, you know, you no longer can uh, see the other plots for free. Obviously, you can always look at your territories here, um, and you can see how you know it'll cost you 250 coins to get to these other territories if you want to keep buying plots around you. Um, and like I said, later in the game, you kind of get one for free, and then after that, you have to buy them out. Um, so yeah, starting with that, uh, first thing you do. We're going to have to put our village center down, which is the center of our village where all of the people get their goods and they start out. And that's also where people, uh, newcomers, will come and join your village. Um, also, I like to think bigger picture with foundation when I play. So when you kind of start out, uh, don't just think of just this plot, right? So you don't want to like put it right in the center because you have to think of eventually you're going to buy a lot of these plots around here. So how is this going to be? Like, where do you want your actual like town center to be once you kind of bought various plots? So I think. I'm actually going to put the town center in a little bit weird spot to start, but it'll kind of make more sense later in the game, which will be up here. I like to kind of do this little corner here and you can get right inside it and then you'll, they'll plop a circle down as soon as you build it. Cool. So now our villagers spawn and we have this. So again, think of this when we have these different plots, we'll kind of have this in a very central spot rather than if we put it like here, it's pretty, you know, pretty close to the edge or if we put it there, it's pretty close to the, the river. Get our builder workshop going. So this is where uh, users will uh, start their build. Uh, builders will be. This I like to put in a more kind of central spot. 
you know, if we start thinking bigger picture again, we'll probably have a lot of housing kind of in this area. We're going to then probably have a lot, you know, we're obviously going to have the berry farming over here. We're going to have some stone here. Might have our forest in this corner. So yeah, with that said, we'll probably put it like kind of right off of our starting area where we can uh, kind of have it near in a central spot for them to be able to get the goods from where we spawned in at. Uh, we can assign our three villagers. We have uh, seven villagers available with, uh, or to start out with 10 and we put the first three here. Then we have seven left to use. So with that said, what else do we have next? Uh, build our lumber camp. Okay, cool. So your lumber camp, um, again, think of where you're going to be getting all your, your forest, although you can plant your trees later. So even, you know, this is going to be kind of another different different choice than what you probably expect is I'm actually going to put my uh, forest camp all the way over here. Um, you also see this big red circle is basically for desirability. Um, so when you have the desirability toggled on um, later in the game, you'll see that that's where uh, you know people want to live. And this red circle, if there's a green circle, it means it's helping the desirability. If it's a red circle, it means it's kind of hurting that. So again, no one wants to like live by, you know, a mining site or by uh, where like you know people are uh, doing hard labor, I guess. So I'm gonna put this over here. And my thinking being is that we're actually gonna put our own like new forest over here, and we'll put our mining right here, so those are kind of near each other. And then we'll have a lot of storage over here, and then our berry farming, and then our housing will actually mainly be over here. I like to put things on three speed early on game, um, just to kind of get things rolling. One of the coolest things about this game that I love is the organic pathing. So you'll notice over time as they kind of make their own paths, they kind of cut down the grass. Um, and then that, if you were to like delete this camp, uh, you could then, you know, over time, the grass would grow back on that path if no one was walking on it. So that's also kind of a unique, uh, cool thing about this game is really, you know, it feels very dynamic in that sense. Um, there's some cool little tricks I can kind of show you later on, but, um, you know, there's this ability to like have forbidden land, AK that like the little Sims won't walk on it. So if you were to put this here, they would actually walk all the way around. Um, so there's a way kind of cool tricks you can do with that from like a uh, designing perspective uh, when it comes to blocking off certain areas or if you want, you know, if you don't like the pathing that they do naturally take. So now that we have our uh, lumber camp, let's get our, let's get three villagers assigned here. We have four left still. This is just a help uh, area. We don't really need too much about that. There's a nice little help section here. You can always go through and look at all the different stuff. That might come in handy for us later in the game uh, when we kind of get to some of the new 1.9 update stuff. So you'll see, we're not in our extraction zone. So of course we gotta like tell them, hey, where do you go to get that wood? And again, we're just gonna naturally put all this in there for now just to get them taking this wood here because we don't actually want this wood here. We wanna actually take this, uproot all this, and then we're gonna build our own little forest. And uh, we also want to put the berries so that people actually collect berries here. And then same with the rocks uh, over the stone. Let me put that over here so it might go a little bit nicer. So now they have a place to collect stone when we get that. Um, cool, so our gathering hut, this is for the berries. You'll notice see the berry hut actually does not provide any uh, negative effects. So I, that's also kind of why you can kind of keep these two together because the, the quarry and the, uh, the lumber yard will have the negative effects. So we can kind of put this over here um, in a spot where it's close for them to get the berries. And again, we also kind of think big picture. So there's probably gonna be some fishing at some point. Where's our closest fishing hole is mm, over here. Okay, so actually our fishing will probably go over here. So we're actually okay to put this closer to the water. I like to build a little bit spread out. You know, I don't want to crowd. Like I said, I'm kind of going for a more aesthetic look to it. So we'll prioritize that, um, this button here, which basically means if you had multiple things to build, your builders would go do work on that first. Doesn't really matter for us here. Um, we don't have multiple things to build just yet. Forestry camp is now, this is the thing that I kind of mentioned where you can plant your own forest. So in our case, we're gonna plant it over here. So let's put this actually like kind of right here on the, the edge. And this is actually where I mentioned where I don't, this is gonna be a forest. So I actually don't want them to walk through that yet. So what we can do here is we can build this red line and say, hey, don't walk in this area. So now you'll see here, it takes, sometimes it takes a second to update, 
But once it does, they'll now uh, take a different path to get up there. So now see how they're kind of cutting through. She, yeah, they came back this way. So they'll probably make a new path here. And then this will uh, slowly grow back. Since they haven't used it much, it'll grow up, will back a lot faster. You'll notice it kind of gets darker as the more people take that path. So the more permanent a path is, um, the kind of more set in stone it is. But again, over time, everything will grow back. So you can always change that if you don't love it. Um, just sometimes takes a while. I think I think at the at this max level where it's kind of matted down, I think it takes a full in-game month to grow back. Um, just an FYI. So yeah, now we have like a new a path that I wanted, kind of this, you know, triangle here. Because like I said, we're going to build our forest here. So they're off gathering our wood, which is awesome. Um, our very gathering hut is now complete. We have four villagers left. So we're going to put them on berry duty. And I think that's our current, yeah, our objective down here is to gather food, which is to produce berries. So as soon as they get over there and start picking berries, that should get completed almost instantly, which let's see if I'm right. And yep, as expected. <laughs> Uh, cool. We also have our forestry. We don't actually need to worry about this yet. So we have all these trees that we're going to have them cut down, um, which will be a plenty uh, useful source of trees for quite a while. It's a little bit longer of a trek, but we'll, we'll deal with that for now. Um, but they'll be able to get all that stuff before we have to worry about imploring someone to actually uh, redo this uh, area over here. Um, so we have new opportunities. Now that you have organized your laborers, you can see that their needs and happiness. Make sure they have access to fresh water and housing. As for food, you will first need people to store and distribute berries they collected. From there, the village will have everything to welcome the first wave of immigrants. Cool, let's put that into practice. So when we actually look at that objective, you'll see we need to build a granary, transporter, uh, get assigned a transporter, and then uh, assign the berries to go to that transporter. So it's kind of like a storage unit, um, basically for your for your uh, berries and different food items. You'll see there uh, for food, raw food, and luxury, uh, luxurious food. So again, no negative effect, a new negative effects here. So I'm gonna kind of put this close to our berry uh, farm. And you'll kind of see if you if you hold control, I think is the default key, you can kind of rotate. So that's also a nice little tip for uh, getting things how you want it. So, and that's where you kind of look at the angle. There's where the, the front entrance is. So those little green arrows basically just mean like those are villager points where they can kind of access the building. Um, so in this case, that's the front entrance. So we'll kind of put that right after the path. Maybe like right, yeah, here. We'll build that. Uh, this requires stone, which we do not have in our resources. So let's also get the, the our stone cutter camp, our mining camp. As mentioned, you see how this one has the big red negative effect area. So that's why I kind of mentioned We'll kind of put that over here and try to kind of limit the negative effect it has. Um, there's some ways later down the line that we can mitigate that through different scenery items and stuff, but again, there's kind of always going to be a negative effect around these different production buildings. And uh, we'll get all that built. We still have one villager available. I'm guessing when this stone gets cut, um, we'll put that one villager there. And then we might move around a few um, that we, like, you know, our wood's already getting pretty high. So we, we might be able to move some villagers around that we uh, don't necessarily need everywhere. Kind of, you know, be more efficient. I would say early on in the game, you kind of have a little bit of, like, nice just, like, waiting and watching. Um, you know, things kind of start to pick up later. Like, again, early game, I kind of keep on 3x almost just to kind of speed. But later uh late in the game you'll want to slow that down a lot because a lot can start to happen and you want to kind of manage it all and of course any minute get, at any given moment you can press spacebar or down here to pause the game if things get a little bit overwhelming for you yeah so that's a nice little path system we have it kind of like a little branching off which i really like i love that effect of the kind of different branches and you'll see here look, this path that was once there is kind of already starting to go away which is awesome cool we have stone cutters so now he's uh he or she is assigned for that and uh, we do have it set to extract all of our stone. So that's good, so they can get that. Yeah, so they'll start picking up our stone for us. Uh, we have no longer any villagers, so once this granary gets built, we'll probably move, I would say, one of our uh, woodcutters over to that area and have them start doing uh, that duty and that job. We can also kind of check and see, there's you know, different little menus in here while we're kind of waiting around, different things you can kind of 
clicked on, they'll open up other menus, um, which is kind of our main book here. It has you know breakdown of villagers, uh, buildings, and you know where people are working. Uh, different resources for trading. We'll kind of get to that here pretty soon, early game. Uh, our economy, how we're doing, how things are shaping up, right? Um, you know, this month, last month, you can go by weekly, kind of look at an itemized or simple breakdowns. That'll kind of make more sense once we once we start to have more more action going on. Um, this is new in the 1.9 update, where we kind of have now this different progression system, and we'll kind of dive into a little bit more. But at the very basic, this is how you can kind of get. Um, you know, your initial warehouse, uh, bailiff office, and wooden bridges. Um, the wooden bridge is also just her very important to note um, that if you were to work, like build on this initial plot with the island, you'll notice there is no outside uh, connections, you know, through the water blocking it. So you'll need that bridge early on to be able to build a connection to the mainland. So that way, when immigration starts, they can actually get to your island because there won't be a way for new people to get to your island without the bridge. So that's going to be an important one for, for some of the maps, or specifically this map, if you were to pick that plot to start. So why don't we uh, remove one of the woodcutters? So we can kind of take them off. You know, now we see we have a, a village unemployed here. Villager unemployed. And we can then have them, as soon as this gets done, to go to that job. And we'll uh, finish out this quest here by assigning the transporter and the berries to go there, the storage. I think our berries are already full, yeah. Uh, one cool thing you can do also um, is as you click on something, you can kind of see your resources. So you can also uh, left click as you brings up the book and the right click will actually kind of give you a live, live view of the tracking. So you can kind of see, this will be kind of cool. I'll leave it on for now, um, just cause it'll be kind of cool here. Once we turn on the granary, you'll see the live action of them moving that to the granary. Um, it's kind of a neat, one of my favorite uh, features of the game, you can kind of see where the actual resources are sitting. You know, you can see our cloth is still at the base camp because we haven't put that anywhere. A rock is down where our stone cutters are, etc. So here, this is kind of cool. So we're going to assign our transporter. So, you know, we uh, crossed off those two objectives. And now as soon as we assign this resource to go here, basically meaning, hey, this is uh, our storage unit. We want to put our berries here. So now berries, uh, as we completed that objective, berries will now get stored here. We don't have much food early game outside of berries, so in this case we can just assign all the slots. Each slot is 100. Um, we can put all the berries right into uh, the granary. And yeah, we kind of quickly missed it there, but you'll see how their things transferred. So I think yeah, yeah she's moving the box of 10 berries all the way from our home base into our, uh, our granary. So now it's got more berries. And this is a good point. I don't know if you don't do the tutorial. I'm not quite sure if you get this free plot. So that'd be worth experimenting with and maybe comment in the uh, leave a comment if you uh, don't if you skip the tutorial, see if you still get this free plot because it might be a good little life hack uh, in the game. If you do the tutorial, get the free plot. But you'll notice now that we go to territories, we have one free territory to redeem. So instead of it being uh, 250 coins like before, you'll notice plenty of options and there are zero coins. So for me, I think we're going to get this plot right here because we get more stone and more berries that we can quickly expand to when we hit that point. So let's do that. I'll grab that. And then now you'll see how we lost that free one, of course. And now back to 250 if we want another plot. We're not going to do too much there yet, but just good to know that we have it. So now we're at the point of um, painting our residential. This, this, this whole painting system is really cool and it gives you lots of options for being more organic. Um, and like I said, there's there's kind of different ways to kind of game the system in the sense of, um, you'll see here, I'm gonna do it right here. So what I like to do is be a little bit more deliberate in my housing. So instead of just painting this massive area and then they just fill in uh, where the housing will be, um, I like to kind of do a smaller area. So I'm gonna put it like right here. And then, let's complete the objective that. And see, it's not gonna be big enough for a house. So nothing's gonna happen yet. And then let's go a little bit bigger. We're going to wait until we see the housing pop in. There it is, right there. So we got to enough space where now people will start building a house right there. And again, you can't really control the exact placement of the houses or the rotation, but by kind of slowly adding the painting for your residential, you can kind of be predict predictable about where the houses are going to go. Whereas if you paint this whole thing, um, this whole area, like where the blue is for our extraction, it could be like a house could pop in all the way over here, all the way here. And I personally like to kind of keep my my village, you know, somewhat organic in the sense that people would kind of live near each other. So now 
our next important piece of our village is getting them the basic goods. So a well for water, a market to uh, be able to sell goods. In this case, they'll be selling and buying berries. Uh, we need to assign someone to sell those berries. Um, and then of course, um, yeah, assign the berries to that stand itself. But yeah, so that's a nice little house popped in in there. I like that in the woods. We might actually, you know what? We'll do this kind of make it look a little cooler. We'll kind of leave a pocket of extraction right here just so we kind of have some trees that stay around that house. Even though we have it on 3x, if you're kind of deliberate in your painting, you can kind of really, like I said, shape your village in a, in a way that's more predictable than if you kind of just blatantly say, hey, build anywhere or extract everything, etc., etc. So yeah, let's get some. We have um, plenty of uh, stone to build our well where they're going to get the water. I like to put this, um, we'll probably place a few over time, but for now we'll kind of put one in a central spot for them to be able to pick up water when they're like, you know, coming to and from work, to their houses, etc. So I'll put that there and we'll prioritize that. You'll see here, you know, part of their happiness comes from food, water, and comfort, comfort being their house uh, for their needs. So once we fill this water here, that, you know, as they visit the well and get their water, that happiness will go up quite a bit. So look at that. And then the other thing we need to do is our market. Again, thinking longer term, where our village will kind of be over here. A lot of our resources will be over here. I think we're going to put our market right in this little pocket right here. So this is the new cool sub building mechanics. So I'll kind of go over this. The way this basically works is you can, you know, when you first place your marker down for where the market goes, you then go in here to create a sub building. Um, Later in the game, when you have a lot more like assets and creative kind of control, we'll be able to do some free building and make, that's again where some of our, our designing will come in. But for now, we kind of don't have too many options for that. So you'll see if we, we pick our market, we just kind of have a stall and a little tent. So for that, we'll kind of just put that right here. And the little ball is where the person will be standing. And then the green arrows are where uh, villagers will come uh, through. So in this case, we'll kind of put it, actually let's put it right, yeah, yeah right here by the wall. We do have some cloth by default, and this is only five cloth. So we'll attach this nice little little awning, um, you know, tent above it to make it just kind of look a little nicer. And we'll build that. So our water is taken care of. So that's you know that negative impact on their needs. Our happiness is already gone. Uh, food will be covered by this market, and then comfort as we build more houses out. And with that said, why don't we kind of see? We put a little bit more in for housing and see if we can get another house to pop in this little area. Let's kind of just keep slowly adding a little bit until we see it pop in. Did it happen? Yeah, right back there. Hard to see, but I think that's a house right there. So let's give it a second, let that pull in. And again, we have no villagers available. So what we'll do is uh, probably pull one of our builders actually uh, from one of our builders over to there. Yep, that was a house perfect right now. And you kind of see they're already starting this cool new little path from people that might live over here to get to their job over here. So I kind of like to start to see where this, you know, starts to grow. And again, if we didn't like that, we could take our forbidden tool and say, hey, I don't want you to go that way. And you could cut them off and they would either go around it or if you really wanted to like make them go a certain way, you could draw like a line all the way from here so that they're forced to kind of go a certain direction. And I think um, we can test it here just because we're not really using this yet. I believe if, you know, you kind of get them on a path system and then you remove this, it may not work all the time, but I'm pretty sure now they'll, they'll, they will they'll won't take that route that we originally saw because they kind of have an established route. So I believe you don't always need to keep that forbidden land there constantly. You can kind of, over time, um, as they pick their routes, they'll, they'll stick with them. So we have our, our villager available and we're gonna assign the resource. So they're gonna sell berries. And we're also going to assign them to sell the berries and that completed our objective. And uh, one thing to note is when you're editing the building, um, again, you're, it's kind of interesting. This is part where it might be kind of confusing for people switching over to 1.9 is when you go to edit the building, you'll, you're not really editing this. This is like a sub building. So you'll see the new parrot market. So this is where you could build, you know, another food stand over here and, and they'll have different options later, but or free build. Um, if you want to look at your parts list, kind of the buildings, the sub buildings, so you can, that's where you can kind of see at the market level, you can click in a sub building. And then again, always go back to the parent. 
And one thing I didn't note earlier, but you'll see when we added the tent also, one big benefit is it also adds 20 capacity. So instead of just carrying 10 berries in the market, they can actually carry uh, 30 berries now. So that helps th make things a little more efficient for us. Um, so right now, our main objective is to just get this happiness up, which basically means they're gonna get their food uh, and then get more housing in to get that up to 100%. And then we'll complete this kind of early on objectives. My vision here is we're gonna have a cool little, we're gonna be able to like rope off or fence off this kind of market area, have a little market right here. One thing I might change is I might actually move that builder, yeah, that building workshop a little bit over here, kind of near our little, our building area. I don't think there's necessarily a need for that to be all the way over there. So why don't we put that down there? We'll build that right there. We can assign, we can remove these builders, bring them over here. And I can't remember if we get that wood back. I don't know if it refunds on destroys. We'll kind of watch this and see with our wood if that jumps up. Um, cool, we, we can immigrate now. We got our, our happiness up to 100%. Um, so no more workers. Let's, let's check real fast. Let's see if this destroy building, let's see if this jumps up by five. Okay, it did not. So it looks like you don't get refunded maybe, or maybe there's only certain things get refunded, but we did not get more. Or we actually, you know what? I, we might not have got refunded because we're at full capacity for wood. That could be why also. Well, well we can kind of test that some more later. Um, so we have a new objective. Um, a business-minded villager suggests you establish a trade route with your closest neighbor, Northberry. This will let you sell resources for a profit and import the ones you can't produce. That's gonna be great, so let's follow that advice. So with this objective, we need to uh, get the warehouse from the book. We need to build the warehouse and assign planks to a warehouse, which that's our new building, the sawmill, which converts our wood logs to planks. So why don't we first build our sawmill? Oh look, we have new villagers coming in here. We can get those here in a second. Okay, why don't we put that right over here? Kind of again next to our wood gathering. I think that's what. Yeah, it's the front door. Okay. When you plop it down, you can kind of still move it after the fact. You don't have to commit until you actually click the build button. That's kind of a good little thing to know. Yeah, it's right there. Perfect. And uh, why don't we grab these new villagers? So we got one villager. Two, two new villagers, so we have to 12 villagers and uh, serfs, and we have two unemployed. So one is going to go to the sawmill once that's built. Um, I think the other one, what are we low on? I think it'll make sense to actually put another one back on wood. Uh, no, let's actually put this forester here. Uh, I don't like the poplar trees. I like to keep it oak and Sycamore and pine. So why don't we start replanting over here while we're kind of waiting and kind of doing some deforestation over here in this area. We're also gonna remove some of this, like I said, to keep a few trees around our housing just to make it look nicer. But we can also start to replant over this area. We'll kind of build our little forest. And uh, to change that size of that, by the way, holding control and, and my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, all in the key bindings, of course, to, to be able to know how to do that. But that's how you can kind of change the, the stylus size. I mean, look, so they're planting trees over in this area. So we're going to basically make our own little organic or, 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 not, like, or not organic, but our own little man-made forest over here. Which I think will come out really nice. And again, I can technically bring it up as close to these places, but I, I kind of like to give things a little bit of breathing room because, again, eventually we're going to have all this room over here and you know all these different plots so there's really no need to, to feel like we're crowding things oh and of course we have a uh, new villagers two more cool so let's put uh assign them to carpentry let's start having them uh, convert some of our, our logs to of our wood to plank um we have one more person what, what would be a good position for them we don't need stone. Let's put them back as builders. We have a lot of stuff to build, so we can kind of keep that efficiency rolling with having more builders. Yeah, I love this little, like, kind of web-looking uh, design we have going on over here. This is really nice. 
So now that we have, uh, we need our warehouse, which means we have to go to our book, our progression, and this is where you unlock that. So it's going to cost us 50 of our gold. We have that now. And the warehouse is kind of like the granary, but for, for other goods. I think what's the description say specifically? Yeah, materials, goods, and luxury items. And this one does have a negative impact, it looks like, as well. So maybe we can put this... I think we'll be okay with uh, just putting it like right here. And then we'll kind of... The positives, you know, so look. If you look at the desirability, the positives from this stuff right here is going to not really make the huge make a huge difference. So we'll see how much... We'll kind of look right here and see. Yeah, just a little bit of green. That's not bad. We still have a pretty good wall of green there to keep everything undesirable over in this little kind of working corner. And you'll notice here that uh, even though they're planting trees, we haven't put that as extraction zone yet. So they'll just keep planting trees and those trees will grow, but we don't actually have to have them uh, go get them just yet. They're still kind of getting these trees, which is a little bit further of a hike, but I think will still uh, give us the best results in the end visually. So this is again a way later in the game if you just wanted to like build a little forest right here. Um, you could just kind of do planting and not have them actually extract it. Oh, look, and we have a, a new villager as right. Oh, we have pretty good happiness so far. Service. Um, so that's going to be for our church. We're going to need to eventually get a church going here. Uh, we have not done just quite yet. I don't know if we have it unlocked either. This probably may comes after this quest line. Um, so now we have another villager. Why don't we see... Why don't we look, take a different view just to show you... You can kind of go to this route too. You don't have to click on each individual building. Individual building, you can kind of look at a higher level. Like, okay, you know, hey, our warehouse has no workers, so why don't we get a worker there? And we can also uh, now assign things to our warehouse. So we can say, hey, planks need to go here. Put our wood here, our tools here, and our stone. So everything left will just be our cloth. We'll sit up here. So our planks are sitting at zero right now, probably being used for other uh, building things. Those are, oh, they're up to 15. And I think for our trade route, we need 20, I believe. Yeah, 20. Once we get up to 20, we can unlock this uh, Northbury trade route for uh, the labor. And then that way we can sell our planks for two gold. Um, we could sell some berries if we have excess amount of berries. That will also get us, you know, some gold. And then what's the sell means that this is stuff we could buy. So, you know, we can't produce tools yet. So even though it's a hefty price, we could, you know, once we use up these 10 tools, we'll have to buy them through the trade route. Same with cloth. Um, and you'll note, like, if we tried to sell that cloth right now, um, they would not buy that. We'd have to sell that to... Looks like no one actually buys cloth. Looks like yeah, I don't see the cloth icon. But, oh, yeah. And we can now unlock the uh, trade route. Perfect. Oh, lots of just happened here. Very cool. Okay, let's close that. All right, we have, uh, no, yeah, all of our new, um, our tiers. So this is kind of, again, in the big changes in 1.9. So we can now work with the different progression, um, prosperity. So uh, we have the labor, uh, the kingdom, um, and the clergy. So basically the workers, the military, or the church is kind of the, the ways to think of it. And new villagers, hey. This is looking really good. So we have two available slots. Why don't we put one as a as a transporter? And why don't we? Oh yeah, we'll do our same before. We can kind of look at the higher level view. Um, see our distribution of. Why don't we put them back to get more woodworkers? Because that's like the top of the funnel of you know converting our our wood to planks. And then also now that we have um, this trade route unlocked, let's do some. Let's set up some trades. So let's say if there's over 200 berries. You know, we're going to sell above. So in this case right now, it would hypothetically sell 49 berries or 51 berries. Um, but nothing, if it's below 200, we don't want to like sell anything because our villagers need to eat. Um, same with our planks. We, we need a planks to build. So we kind of want to set this a bit higher. Maybe I like to set it maybe around 50. So anything above 50 planks will we'll start to sell. Um, but we don't want, we want to use like have a housing of planks here. So that way we can also... Uh, also use them but i think also they only take 10 items per per trade route so even if we have it set to like 50 and we had 70 it would take them two runs to take that excess of 20. it doesn't just like they don't just grab all 20 right away at least until you maybe level it up level one it seems like they only take 10. yeah so look we're gonna have a nice little forest area right there this is all 
getting cleaned out nicely, but we're leaving a little bit of greenery in. I love this. Love the look of this. Uh, we got more villagers on the way. Happiness is other than our, you know, we need a church, which they're gonna love. Come to you, light-hearted woman, announcing she and her folk would like to thank you for your hard work. It's true that you made great strides already. Cool. So we, this is where we're going to start setting up our administration buildings. So let's put this into practice. So now we have to build our main house. We already have our tools in the warehouse. Um, and we also need to buy some tools. Um, which I think... Have we done that? No. So we're, we're selling all of our items right now. Let's just say if our tools ever get below... I don't know. Five. Let's always buy five. Um, yeah, buy until the inventory reaches. Well, actually, we'd do ten because we're gonna need quite a bit of tools early on. So right now, no tools will be bought because we have ten. But you know, if we start using these, we'll it'll keep kind of upping them until we we stay at ten. So we got that an optional. So now we have to build our manor house. Um, and then again, thinking bigger picture, I think we're gonna have our manor house be like right in this little pocket where people. Are traveling through and stopping by. So let's uh, let's do that. So similar to how the market works, this has a lot of the sub building structure. So you kind of put it down, and then you now say, uh, "Hey, I want a great hall." And then from there, you can uh, have some basic items. Again, we're gonna unlock a lot more visuals later on. Um, early game, you kind of just have the basics, so don't be alarmed. This game has lots of customization as you kind of go get, as you grow. So we can pop this guy down. And then this is where the game gets really fun. There's a lot of cool, unique ways. You know, it's not like some games you play where you just plop down the same looking building constantly. And, th and this game does have that too. Right? For example, like, you know, a rock quarry or the lumber camp is always going to look the same. But like where they kind of really get unique is these these buildings that have the sub buildings. You can really kind of make your own. So you could make this, you know, some ridiculous. <laughs> you could get really silly with it if you wanted. Um, you know, you can make this building, uh, it would cost you a lot of resources, but, you know, you can kind of do some really cool, like, you know, castle building and stuff later on. So in this case, um, we're going to put, you know, a little bit higher and we're going to pop down our, our nice little house. And I mean, that's my, just a tad bit high. That looks a little more realistic and not too, not too ridiculous, right? Um, and then this visitor location also, we can I'll pull that back a little bit. This just means like when the NPCs come to the front of the building, this is like where they're going. So like you can kind of do some cool stuff with that. I, I can kind of show you that a little later on, some cool tricks with that. But I kind of always put it facing the front door so it looks like they're actually coming to the front door. This is all up to you. I like to personally clean up my uh, zones and make them look a little bit nicer. So, um, you know, some people could just leave, you could leave that there, you know, there's nothing there, they won't extract it, but I like to just kind of clean things up a little bit. Um, so let's kind of just keep next. Let's get this little spot. I bet you a house will come right in this. Yep, right as I expected. A little house will pop right, right in there. Get my house built. So right now we have some houses being built and we have the manor house being built. Um, looks like it has all the resources. Just got these builders need to come and actually build it. I think our next plot of land will be this. Even though there's no resources, I kind of want to expand out some of this mining in, in some of our warehouses in this little area over here. Probably some uh, a farming, you know, and our, our, our uh, fishermen will be down here. So manor house is getting built. That's looking good. Our housing is, yeah, it looks like there's a few people without homes, which again, we can check by clicking on our villagers. And I think if we look in, oh yeah, they all have homes actually. So maybe they just haven't gone home yet. Once they, oh yeah, once they go home, that comfort level will jump up. Cool. Our forest, our, our, our homemade forest over here is looking nice. You know, I think I want to just keep just the pine. Yeah. I don't know if I want to have all these other ones. We'll, we'll swap those out. So when they replant later, we'll just do pine trees. Kind of like look at like in this little cluster here. I kind of like the look of that. Or maybe pine trees with just oak. Just a little bit, a little bit of variety. would be nice. Oh, we got a new villager. It looks like we have, uh, that's our trader, by the way. When you see that, he comes and he'll go to your, he'll go to your different spots. So for example, he'll go here uh, to buy and sell those goods and then he'll kind of go to your granary and then buy and sell those goods. And then he'll be on his way. I don't know if he can, oh yeah, you can click on him. You can kind of see what he wants to buy and what he wants to sell. Or you could even follow him if you'd like. You and see where, he tr where our little traveler goes. Very nice, very nice. 
I would even say when we start getting a little bit of excess, oh, which we do have a villager who does not have a job right now, we might start a second berry farm because berries are, are such a crucial part of the economy for both selling markets and eating for food, um, especially early to mid game. So we're going to, that stock is going to dwindle pretty quickly once we get a lot of people. So we're going to want to get some more berry production going pretty soon. And also you kind of have to look at different angles, but you'll notice the painting applies where the trunk hits. So you'll see how they're going to hit that one, but they would not hit that one because even though the, the top leaves are maybe somewhat in that area, like if you look at it like this, it looks like they're going to hit that tree, but it's the trunk itself is not in that. Um, so you just sometimes you have to check different angles to kind of see what they're actually going to grab. And look, we have our manor house now, um, which we can also set up taxes. And this is where our, we're going to be making our money. But let's 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 add on. So again, kind of like the sub uh, buildings, you kind of have different buildings here. Our great hall is our default building. We're going to want to edit the building and add a new building type, which in this case is our tax office. And you'll see we're kind of starting to unlock new areas, new different ways. Um, you'll see how there's these different snapping points. Um, these little white dots so you can kind of snap to different things if you want to do that but also you can always turn that off with the no snapping if you want to have just free-for-all placement um, again lets you have a lot of creativity in that um, i like to kind of use a snapping some uh, for the most part and then sometimes just throw in a little bit of uniqueness depending on, like what type of building it is usually i go more unique on the the markets rather than the uh these manor houses and uh, we'll grab that villager while we're seeing yeah, I think that'll be good. Um, I think we don't need to add a door to it because um, they'll come through that front door. We can just build that right away. And we can assign our villager. Oh, I guess that, I think it has to be built before we can assign them. Um, but once it's built, we have them come over here. And then we'll be able to start assigning people taxes and start um, making money that way. Well, I guess we can set up our taxes now, even though they won't. Oh, I think that's actually how it works is you can set your taxes here. So in this case, we want to make a little bit of money um, to our serfs, you know, and the money won't actually be collected until this tax building is built. And then we have a tax person go and collect that. And again, this is all it's really nice because it's all in this tutorial. So if you were to come in the little help menu up here and type in tax, you would see like, oh, taxation. And it would just explain what I kind of mentioned, like, oh, you know, you can uh, set your taxes and then, you know, have your tax uh, office built at the manor and then employees of villager, which goes and uh, gets you the actual tax money. And if you have multiple tax offices, you can actually cover more ground. So that's something later in the game you'll want to have multiple of those. I think once we kind of get past this next um, objective, we'll probably wrap up our, our first episode of the series here, um, which is kind of an early game starting out. Um, oh man, that's looking really nice over here too. Uh, let's make sure we're not getting those trees. Yeah. I actually want to keep that tree. So this little guy gone. And then somebody's back here. Maybe this little bucket here. Cool. Let's grab that. Oh, two villagers. Nice. What jobs do we still kind of have? Um, our carpenter would kind of up that, we'll up our production. Oh, sorry, we forgot. One of these uh, need to go to our tax collector. So we need to save one for our tax collector once that's built. It should be here shortly, it looks like almost. So it looks like that person right here is coming to build it for us. Oh, and our tax office is built. Okay, so we have no more villagers. Perfect. So we have our tax office, villagers. And then, yeah, so we're at the point now where you finally built yourself a great hall. You spend a few minutes of silence thinking about your aspirations and what your future should be. And um, I think we're going to save that for the, the next episode, but we can kind of look at our aspirations and start to define those. Um, so here, down here in the bottom left, you can edit those and see all the different options. And we can kind of like see what we want to build towards. Um, some of them we can't already, you know, like for example, there's some like harder, difficult ones like this. We could have never, you know, we've already generated money from a trade route. Um, so there's stuff like that, that if you kind of challenge yourself in different ways in the game, um, you have to think about it earlier, even earlier on than, than we did. Um, 
But yeah, with that said, why don't we just quick, get a quick little uh, cinematic and we'll just kind of uh, chill and I will hopefully catch you for the next episode. Definitely comment anything you'd like to see specifically, any like tips. Um, I think early game is, uh, is definitely the opportunity for us to kind of explore and kind of look at different stuff. But then as we as we get further along, we'll be able to keep building and making things look nicer. And yeah, I'm, re I'm really excited for, I think the, the overall their overall village is going to look awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks again for hanging out and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.